come to the presentation of my study factor related to the continuous use intention of the consumer, it is qualitative of big buy market in Thailand. Here is my profile. My name is Atipon Metavikun from the uh, Graduate College of Management, Sri Petum University, Thailand. So for today's topic, I will focus on the cover the four topics, the introduction, literature reviews, result and conclusion, and also the conclusion. First about the introduction, before going to the content, I would like to let you know of the type of the big buy market in Thailand. Actually, the big buy also have a various type of the big buy in Thailand. So this is the overall of the big buy market and the type of the bike. Actually, this the research in the research background. Um, in the world context, it is the recognized that transportation costs economic activity and it can be any method. The slides are not changing. Uh, we can just see the first slide of yours. Oh, yeah, now we are able uh, to see the third slide. Yeah, please. Sorry, let me. Okay, let me share screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see the screen. Do, uh, so you can go ahead with the small screen only uh, instead of uh, making it a, this one. So you can just uh, present now. We can see the screen. Okay, this is the research background. Actually, in the world context, it is recognized that transportation costs economic activity and it can be any method such as public transportation system or personal vehicle in some developing country with inadequate transportation and low income per head. Most people to use their vehicle, thus the motorcycle is the choice that they can afford as the price of trans motorcycle is only the car price. On the other hand, in developing countries such as in the US or EU, most people prefer driving a car to riding a motorcycle, yet some need a motorcycle for lecture lecturers and seeking a new experience. This is motorcycle is a big bike with a high cycling capacity, remarkable design and expensive. This is the research background. Some of them are limited, limited production. It differ from the customer in developing country who ride about small or medium motorcycle with a, rope, a lower price capacity. Thailand has a large number of motorcycles that have been used considerably. Thailand is also a major regional producer of complex, complete knockdown units for export with the legions and still of there are also forecast to see good rates of growth on rising demand in the main export targets in Asian country and and so, so for the research background, nevertheless, as changing of the nature of the society and environment in developing country, this impact to motorcycle sale by the need of vehicle for more lecturer and also for other than transportation only from other income customer. Additionally, the pollution problem in the big city may country has law of motorcycle limitation in their country area, such as in China and also Indonesia. As a result, it seems that the small motorcycle sale is saturated, while the selling of big bike is growing instead. Motorcycles are a measure of people's purchasing power, especially those with low incomes and middle class living both inside and outside the city. So this is show that the future growth in the future and also Thailand population growing run to the 2.1 million units, which represent the growth of 0.4% and increase in export help to lift production. While in the same year, domestic demand tracking slightly leads the conclusion that Thailand has, still has an advantage in the manufacturing base of big buy when compared with the other country in this region among other supporting factors in both of the demand and supply. 
So, however, the importance of this segment has slightly increased following the government's policy decision to try to attract foreigner players to invest in the motorcycle production with an engine of over 248 cc in Thailand. So for the research gap, I think that it is the rising globalization era has demanded that the world change from the old paradigm into the new one in every aspect, especially in the marketing world. Now today, to win over the market share cannot only be a business that rely on the functionality, that's it. It is also convince people and customers to be like a brand attribute to its product and also deliver specific image and the mindset of the consumer and end user. Therefore, the continuous use intention factor, it is, oh, sorry. It is one of the it is one of the factors that are very important for income generation and development of the big buy market. So the research is aimed to study factors that relate to the continuous use intention of consumer for the big buy market in Thailand. This is the my literature review that explained about relevant theory and empirical study that have been truly reviewed and involved a review of critically foundation and literature reviews. So for the methodology of this research, I use the qualitative research by in-depth interview with the key information of the 20 person and also interview in deep interview guideline from the, the customer. So the results and discussion, the finding of the in-depth interview about the influential factors that relate to the continuous use intention of the consumer for the big buy market in Thailand and record the frequency of the selected factors as shown in the table. Then select the factor with a score greater than five points for consideration as a factor. According to the table, the results of analytic introduce, introduction induction review that the main factor for improve, improving factors related to the continuous use intention of the consumer for the big buy market in Thailand are classified into two main factors, which are the customer values and also the product values. The result of an interviewing information providers indicate that consumer value factors usually considered may be slightly different according to the options, opinions of the big bike riders. Moreover, several factors on customer value relate to the continuous use intention of customer for the big bike market in Thailand, including the experience value, self confidence list perception, and also customer satisfaction. The result of interviewing information providers show that product value factors usually considered may be slightly different according to the opinions of big buy riders also. Moreover, several product value factors relate to the customer's continuous use intention for the big buy market in Thailand, including product design, product knowledge, product quality, and also product mandatory value. And also for the marketing communication has no relationship with the continuous use intention of customers. Conclusion, the study results are brought to the development of factors that relate to the continuous use intention of consumer for the big buy market in Thailand. As a summary of this study, the factors relate to the continuous use intention of consumers for big buy market in Thailand are for customer value factors, namely, experience value, self confidence list perception, and customer satisfaction. In addition, the factors related to the continuous use intention of consumer for big buy market in Thailand also include four product value factors. Thank you namely, for your wonderful presentation. Product, yeah. yeah. Yeah, is it done? Um, actually, finally, the further study should be conducted for empirical study affecting continuous use intention for the customer for the big buy market in Thailand. Thank you very much. Thank you.
hai Mr. Atipon, is it done? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Because I couldn't able to see the thank you slide. Okay, now I sorry, thank you. Well, uh, wonderful presentation, sir. We would love to get in touch with you. Please share your email address and all. Right, uh, we will be in touch with uh, you. So now we will call upon the next presenter, uh, Mr. Uh, Sang John. Yeah, please share your presentation. Sang John. Yeah, can you allow me to share a screen? Yeah, you can you can share the screen now. Oh, okay. Yeah, please carry on. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Please go ahead. Okay. So nice to meet you. My name is Yong Sang Kim. Uh, yeah, I'm working for University of Guam. So today uh, I, I will introduce my research uh, project, the titled Detection and Trend of Perfluorooctane Sulfonic Acid, we usually call PFOS, in the public water supply system of Saipan. So let me introduce the, this chemical. So this chemical's name uh, we call perfluoroalkyl substance. So this, uh, so we usually also call PFAS. PFAS is a group of man-made chemicals that include PFOS and P4. We usually call these names and frequently detected in uh, drinking water. And in the United States in 2016, the US EPA uh, set up the regulation the regulation to control PFOS and P4. The, the reg detection, detection limit was 70 nanogram per liter. So after setting up this rule, uh, US public water agency uh, needed to take the proper actions to treat this contaminant from drinking water source. So PFAS, PFAS is frequently detected in a firefighting a training station because the main component of firefighting form is PFOS and P4. And also uh, these uh, contaminants uh, can be detected in crazy site because firefighters uh, sprayed uh, this form. And also waste dumping station, uh, wastewater treatment plant, and some chemical stro storage if there is a leaking. So in Saipan, uh, there is an uh, international airport. And then uh, when uh, Saipan uh, analyzed uh, this chemical, they found uh, many, uh, many of these chemicals around uh, international airport area. So um, Saipan, so, so main drinking water source of Saipan is groundwater. So they have installed a lot of uh, drinking water production wells around um, Saipan International Airport. And they sampled from over 50 production drinking water wells. And they, fi they found a uh, high level of PFAS from um, the five um, entry point. Entry point means a kind of a storage water tank to collect all water tank from groundwater. So after we realized uh, groundwater is contaminated with PFAS, in 2018, uh, we collected 10 soil samples from a firefighting uh, training center. So we, we suspected uh, this site because firefighting centers uh, sprayed a lot of uh, firefighting foam on this ground. And before we uh, set up our uh, sampling strategies, we also analyzed uh, groundwater flow in this area. The reason why was, uh, yeah, once ground, once soil is contaminated with contaminant and along with the water flow, it reached to groundwater and flow along with groundwater flow. So based on groundwater flow analysis, we found that uh, this contaminant was flowing toward south uh, shore. Uh, coastal line area. 
So we also uh, analyzed a uh, hydraulic gradient. And then what we found from this research was in Saipan, there are very distinct uh, dry and rainy season. So du uh, during rainy season, uh, there is a very low groundwater flow. In rainy season, slightly groundwater uh, flowed toward uh, coast, coastal uh, coast area. And there, there was uh, another driving force of uh, contaminant movement. So as I mentioned before, there are a lot of uh, production uh, drinking water well. So when, when this well was in operation, then uh, water level should go down. Then because of uh, the withdrawal of water, then it generate a driving force of contaminants. So uh, we analyze the soil sample and uh, uh, with uh, LC mass. And the result of soil analysis was that, so we found the peoples at the highest level uh, at the soil sample followed by, uh, we usually call PFHPA, P4, and PFNA. So after we confirmed this soil is fully contaminated with PFAS, uh, we uh, set up the monitoring strategy between 2016 through 2020. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, five uh, entry points were fully contaminated. So we collected the sample one to six times per year for four years. And from the entry point name IF208EP, we all samples uh, contained, contained PFAS. And also other, um, other entry, point, entry point also included uh, PFAS. So, so this graph shows the result of PFAS analyzed at IF208, the mostly contaminated. And 2016, uh, we turned off uh, this system because this system was fully contaminated. So after turning off this system, the level uh, dropped down from 8,000 nanogram per liter to uh, around 30 nanogram per liter. That indicate if, if this uh, system didn't work, then that means there is, there is not many turbulent, uh, turbulent flow. So that can uh, reduce some contaminant level. And on the contrary, after turning off uh, IF208, the most contaminated entry point, other, other entry point level of PFAS started to rise. So that indicate the IF208 site was, uh, was mostly contaminated. And after stopping operation of this system, uh, PFAS started to migrate toward other um, entry point. So uh, this graph also shows the variance of uh, people's level during 2016 and 2020. Yeah, here is a result. The artifact of the IF-208 site is impacted by people's, we uh, confirmed. While not in operation uh, from 2016, people's contamination at IF-208 seems to be dispersed to other site, especially Isley Booster 1. This is the entry point name. And IF-28 and Isley Reservoir and KV-21 through 25. And this, this entry point still include peoples in uh, production well water. So to better understand people's migration in detail, uh, we are going to analyze groundwater flow more in detail. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful presentation, sir. A nice topic indeed. Uh, we will get in touch. Please share your uh, details. We will be in touch. Thank you. Now I would so like to I... next. Yeah, please uh, go ahead. Please, please go ahead. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so my title of the talk, 
uh, will be the, the automated nano defect review of mechanical, electrical, and chemical characterization by scanning from microscope. Uh, probably may uh, you don't uh, aware of the atomic force microscope. Uh, AFM is not like a typical the optical microscopy, but it is like a probing robot. You can clearly see the benefit of AFM by comparing naked eye and optical microscope images and the electron microscope images to AFM images. Uh, electron microscopy has high resolution, but only available for 2D imaging less analysis method and operating in only in vacuum. When one, uh, one of the SPM called the scanning tunnel in microscope was first introduced, it was called the key to the nano world because it shows the possibility of seeing and playing with the atoms. However, another kind of SPM called AFM is rapidly becoming an enabler of nanotechnology and is essential equipment in real world applications such as electronics, semiconductors to material, and pharmaceutical applications. Starting as a key to become an uh, enabler, there ha uh, have been several hurdles for AFM technologies to overcome. And one of them is the automation. Uh, to successfully enter into the uh, industrial market for AFM to become an in inline wafer fab inspection tool, the various automation has to be implemented. In addition, we also need to develop several the process compatibilities for industrial applications like uh, uh, cleanness, size, and communication uh, protocols. So uh, the uh, future of semiconductor technology is uh, driven by the new application, uh, like uh, driven devices and systems, such as uh, big data analytics, uh, physical systems, uh, simulations, and artificial intelligence. In order to achieve such functions, complex 3D structures uh, need to be fabricated using new materials and processes with ever decreasing dimensions. You will see all kinds of devices with wire, uh, weird uh, looking structures, tiny and high aspect ratio structures in the coming years. AFM is becoming more valuable than ever uh, with the decreasing dimensions. And AFM is not just for 3D visualization of a nanostructure. Uh, with the AFM, there are so many things you can do. There are advanced mode available for kind of a, uh, the chemical analysis, electrical analysis, mechanical property analysis, and magnetic property analysis, and, and so forth. And one of, them, one of the applications I want to show you is the uh, defect analysis uh, by AFM. So, uh, why this is important is that because the pattern size of the lithographic process continues to be smaller, defects that can previously be ignored have now reached the level that cannot be ignored compared to the pattern size. For example, a manufacturer can ignore 10 nanometer size defect in tens of micrometer size feature, but no longer ignore it in a 50 nanometer size pattern. As a result, uh, defining the uh, defect identity and cause, uh, cause, cause like a determines the engineering processes to success. So defect study is important for industry using uh, super flat substrate, especially hard disk media, silicon wafers, and UV mask. And there are various types of defects in shape and materials. So this is one of the spec, like a uh, first uh, come with the optical microscope, optical uh, system like a SSIS tool. And then uh, it is the kind of a, a zoom in by the AFM to be kind of characterize uh, the, the defect to review. And uh, AFM technology has measurement area of, uh, up to like a hundred micrometer. So it is uh, suitable for high resolution and high accuracy image measurement, but not suitable for full high range measurement, which is frequently requested. So that's why we develop uh, combined with the uh, wide light interferometry, we can have um, uh, obtained large areas quickly. And then we can later on zoom in with the AFM to get high resolution. And, and this is another example. So using w, uh, WRI to uh, uh, find out the uh, defects and then characterize it. And this is one of the example to see the, how this defect is not visible in the WRI, but with the AFM, you can see all these high resolution images. 
But not just seeing the images with uh, this kind of uh, uh, probes, you can get the mechanical data of the samples. So using this kind of technology, you can not just see images, you can get a kind of adhesion, modulus stiffness in kind of um, in quantitative uh, uh, data format. And in addition, uh, not just uh, those kind of uh, uh, things, we recently developed new uh, uh, technology called the photo-induced force microscope. So which is, uh, you can say the you probably all know about FTIR. So this is a kind of a nanoscale uh, FTIR to identify the, the uh, chemical uh, analysis of the sample. So this is uh, one of the kind of um, uh, examples. So we don't know the, what kind of defect it is, but using PIFM, we can determine what kind of um, uh, defect it is. So it is combined with the silicon carbide, with the metal. So we can define those things, then we can rather uh, treat the uh, defect uh, 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 very uh, efficiently. So in summary, uh, AFM kind of has uh, greatly improved. The technology has been greatly improved. And Pinpoint uh, can precisely, precisely measure mechanical electrical properties. And PIFN is becoming a nanochemical analysis solution. And then this uh, AFM become uh, evolved into more precise, versatile, and user-friendly instrument. And thanks, thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your wonderful presentation, Mr. Jun Chow. Yeah, uh, please share your details so we'll in collaboration. So the next presenter uh, we can call upon is uh, one second. Let me just uh, see the name. We have. Uh, Barris, education efficiency at university in the COVID-19 example of Turkey. Do we have them here? Okay. Oh, and then anyone can, uh, yeah, uh, Maxerit, uh, please take over the session, ma'am. You can, you can start a presentation. It's okay, screenshot. Yes, we can see your desktop. Please uh, open your presentation, ma'am. It's uh, open sc uh, screenshot. Yes, yes, we, we can see the screen. Uh -huh, yes. Uh, my name is Makirete Krasnici. Uh, PhD student uh, in University of Kosovo, Faculty Law uh, Department Civil. Um, my topic is um, is uh, comparative aspects of the judgment due to the absence of the defendant in the contested procedure according to the legal system of Germany, legal system of Austria, and the legal system of Kosovo. Uh, we are presenting the uh, Legal Institute of the Judgment uh, due to abstinence, uh, legal uh, system Germany, Austria, and Kosovo. The judgment, judgment will not be used due to the absence even if the condition or met if the court find that it is a request with which the parties do not, parties is defendant, do not have the right to dispose freely. Also, the insurance of the judgment due to absence is postponed if there is a need for the circumstances so that the court has the necessary notification. The legal system in uh, 
Germany. According to the German legal system based on the German civil procedure code included in book two, chapter uh, I, title three, where it is the defined from the article 331 to article 347, where it is presented with the title, the judgment due absent. It is the foul judgment uh, against the defendant. Other provisions of the code are also related to the judgment due to absence. Judgment due to absence can be used against the defendant at the request of the plaintiff because the defendant didn't uh, come to a hearing which they assumed that the facts presented the court by the plaintiff with oral agree uh, agreement were the accepted. We can mention the decision in absentia in, is in a, uh, inadmissible when the request for a judgment due to absence or a decision based on the minutes in the current situation must be rejected anywhere if it uh, one the party appearing in unable to procure the proof of evidence demanded by the court on the grounds of circumstances that are to be taken into account ex officio too. The party that has filed to appear was not uh, duly summoned and the particular was not summoned in due time. Three, facts are uh, submitted to the court in oral agreement or a petition have not been communicated by a written pleading to the party that has filed to appear. Uh, four, four. Uh, in the foreseen case that the defendant uh, was uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, for the As uh, for, uh, from all this, we can conclude that with the passive role of the defendant, the court is you, the judgment due to absence. In the German system, the court doesn't treat the evidence and doesn't uh, 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 re uh, reaction in the decision. The legal system in Austria, the Austrian legal system provided in this way the judgment due to absence under Article 30, uh, uh, 396 of the Code of Civil Procedure. Uh, one, if the defendant doesn't uh, lodge the defense in good time, a judgment due to absence shall be given at the request of the plaintiff. His factual uh, uh, agreement concerning the subject matter of the dispute must held uh, to be true insofar as it is so not refuted by the present evidence and must established on the basis by the claim. Two, if after a timely defense has been lodged or after a timely objection, when the parties file the accept the statute uh, before entering a, uh, an oral submission, 
or substance of the matter in the dispute the judgment due to the absence in the accordance with paragraph one uh, shall uh, be given in the request uh, the party of pairing. The application for judgment due to absence shall be uh, <coughs> shall uh, be a document during pro, uh, pro, uh, production of the copy in a bra, be, be it for uh, three however in the default has raised a procedural objection that is still to be heard the judgment due to absence cannot be made before in the rejection for in uh, consequence of the omission occur automatically by Article 144. In the Austria too, uh, there has been a reform of the provision related of the judgment due to absence of the default, in which case there are uh, already two possible alternatives to the issuance of the judgment due to absence. The first alternative consists in the case when the judgment is rendered due absence due to the non-response of the defendant to lawsuit, while the second alternative consists in case while the defendant after submitting the response to the lawsuit doesn't appear and hearing in which the defendant must orally present uh, the position of uh, itself in relation to case which is the subject or dispute the proceeding based uh, on the on the new provisional of Article 30, uh, uh, 1960 Code of uh, Civil Procedure in Austria. The legal system of Republic of Kosovo. We are briefly presenting the legal institute of judgment due to absence in the legal system of Republic of Kosovo. The judgment due to absence of defendant party is definitive in Article 151 of the law of contested procedure of Republic of Kosovo. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, also, the local institute of judgment based of disobedience non compliance defined it in Article 150. Why uh, we present in Article uh, 151 in relation to judgment due the absent? Article uh, 151. The point one when the charge is not sent to answer but it is sent only together with the invitation to preparation session and he doesn't come for se uh, se the session until finished or in the first session for the main main elaboration if the timing for the preliminary session was not determined the court with proposal uh form the plaintiff or the accordance with the official task is use a decision by which approves the claim chairs decision due to the absence in the If the defendant was invited regularly the session, if the defendant never contested the request for change through preliminary procedure change party didn't the opposite, if the foundation of the request uh, emerges from the facts shown in the lawsuit, if the facts of the, which the request are based are not contradictory to the existing proofs presented by the plaintiff or the uh, other facts uh, known worldwide. If there are circumstances notes from the which can uh, be determined that the defendant was stopped due to you you uh, justified reasons on uh, no to the attend the session.
Evan, this case, it should be noted the legislator with the new law, civil uh, procedure uh, of Republic Kosovo has made a substantial intervention when he divided the judgment due to absence of two alternatives accordance the provision of article 150 uh, judgment due uh, to disobedience no compliance and article 151 judgment due to absence of uh, law civil procedure this uh, this is due to the fact that judgment due to disobedience non-compliance is the fact judgment due to absence of the defendant although the new new uh, law uh, civil proce procedure is a new law it must be subject to the reform process in the case as uh, well in the particular provision of article 150 and article 151 to the uh, law civil procedure need to be reform, reformed. We can conclude that the judgment due to absence is a judgment with the legal effect as well as other types of judgment. and conclusion. And conclusion, we can conclude that the German, Austrian and Kosovo legal system have in common that the judgment due to absence is used by the court against the defendant does not fulfill the summons and does not respond at all. This judgment is rendered without administering and uh, the evidence because the plaintiff has uh, attached, uh, attached them to the lawsuit and the defendant has never has to contest them. Thank you very much. I finished. Thank you for your presentation, ma'am. Uh, it was a wonderful. Good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say thank you for the possibility to take part on this conference. My name is Andras Stott. I am from, uh, associate professor at the University of Public Service in Budapest, Hungary. The topic of my presentation is the Internet of Things Solutions in Military Environment, uh, which is supported by the Hungarian Academy of Sciences and the Ministry of Innovation and Technology. Uh, Okay, here you can see the agenda of my presentation, which is the following. Uh, in the beginning, I will talk about the aim of my research and uh, then the methodology uh, what was used. I will then present two types of analysis of my research, the showdown and the operational analysis, and uh, it is, will be followed by the results and the conclusions. Here are the research questions. Uh, I had two research questions during this uh, uh, research. Uh, how are the IoT tools emerging in modern warfare? And the second one was the how do the IoT de devices affect information operations? In the last few years, uh, my research topic was the information and cybersecurity issues of the Internet of Things. Uh, uh, I analyzed in the last few years the IoT in critical infrastructures, critical infra information infrastructures, the security issues and the vulnerabilities in IoT solutions and the, basically the IoT in a military environment. So this, uh, during this research, I realized that the IoTs have a, a huge impact on military activities. So I continued uh, my research on this way. Uh, there, was, there is a huge operation now in uh, Ukraine, and it is the Russian Ukrainian operations. Uh, it started early in the 2022 with DDoS attacks. Uh, they basically, these attacks was the, the Donabot malware as a service platform, uh, the uh, GRUU, the Russian intelligence head headquarters, and the UK International National Cyber Security Centers uh, forced these uh, DDoS attacks. They said that uh, this happened in this uh, period. Uh, in 15 and 16 February against the Ukraine banking system, and uh, in 2nd of March, against the website of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, they attacked this with, with this uh, Dana bot, this uh, system, information security systems. 
in, in March, there was also, also one huge attack with IoT infrastructures uh, on the Ukrainian side on, on 5th of, uh, of March. Uh, Russia got a huge DDoS attacks uh, from uh, uh, f- uh, more than 150 countries. That was Hungary also affected in these uh, attacks. Nearly uh, 50 IP addresses was from Hungary. We analyzed these uh, IP addresses. We found that these IP addresses came from Hungary. We could uh, say uh, said that uh, which companies was affected and uh, involved in these attacks. We used for the uh, analysis the Shodan software. On the Shodan, here you can see that it is a, a one organization in Moscow, uh, and they have open ports for the, the to the internet. For example, the 80, the 80 is the uh, unsecured HTTP uh, port. So basically, if somebody finds this uh, device with the IP addresses, the IP addresses on the uh, laptop. Uh, he, he or she can attack these devices from the internet because it's unsecured, so it's easy to attack these uh, tools. We, we uh, found more, more than 1,000 I, uh, IoT devices in, on the Shodan in Moscow, so it was uh, very easy for the attackers to uh, attack these tools in the systems. Uh, in the Shodan, we can find also the common vulnerabilities and exposures uh, codes. In the left, you can see the numbers of the vulnerabilities. If uh, when it is exploited, this vulnerability is exploited. Uh, it results a negative impact of, to confidentiality, integrity, or availability. So if they are expo- uh, exploited by an attacker, it could have a serious negative impact on the operation of the critical infrastructure, such as a hospital's IoT system, or as in the case of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, for example, it was uh, on the energy system. So energy systems was also attacked by IoT devices, which was op- uh, uh, open to the uh, internet for the we could find the uh, IoT devices in Hungary as well. In Hungary, uh, the most typical companies are telecommunication companies like Vodafone. Everybody knows, I guess, the Vodafone. The uh, Hungarian Telecom is uh, Magyar Telecom is the Hungarian Telecom. Uh, there are a satellite company, so they were they were involved in these attacks. The most typical uh, operation systems was the Mikrotik routers. So if somebody used uh, Mikrotik uh, routers now, uh, I um, I asked them that uh, update the software, the firmware, because they are vulnerable and the, the attackers can easily exploit an attack with these microtic routers. Okay, uh, I checked the, the system on July 7, 17th of July. Uh, one microtic router from the company on Hungary, it was still open to the internet, so the attackers could use these devices also to attack uh, somebody with IoT devices. But uh, what are the IoT devices and how they uh, look? There are four different types of IoT devices. Basically, there are the, uh, the first, who, which uh, sensing and measuring the information of their environment. The second type is the carrying devices, which connects these physical devices to the communication networks. The data storage devices or NAT devices, because it can be, for example, the cloud, or it can be just a hard drive. They store uh, the information which is collected by the sensing and activating devices. And there are the generic devices, which uh, are processing and, and provide communication capabilities with them. Uh, well, sorry, with wired or wireless technologies. So these are the tools which helps to communicate in the IoT environment. We, uh, the systems built from these devices have a layered structure with seven different uh, layers. The first layer is in the uh, middle of the circles. This is the sen- sensing layer where we can find the sensors, radars, cameras, wearable equipments, or F- RFIDs. The sex, second is the access layer with the gateway nodes, and that is the network layer with the wired or wireless communication services. The service layer with the computing management services, storage facilities, or uh, processing services. And the uh, uh, seventh layer is the application layer where we can find the uh, uh, ex- applications for example, in military logistic or the military leadership or battlefield monitoring when we are thinking on uh, military environment. 
in military environment, when we talk about IoT devices, we can uh, uh, make differences between the battlefield things and the military things. In the battlefield things, it is the tactical level, the, the lowest level. Uh, the Internet of Battlefield things means that uh, it is a set of network battlefield devices that communicate each other in two way the direction and share this information in near real time using some technologies like database, file sharing, or two uh, base uh, systems. Which kind of devices can they? They can be uh, sensors, they can be cameras. So, for example, here are some uh, tools which was in from the news from the Russian Ukrainian conflict. On the right top, there is a CCTV camera picture from this CCTV camera. Uh, the Ukrainian could watch that in this city, in this small town, the soldiers hardly move on the street. On the uh, left down, there is a air pod, air, air, uh, airpods, air tax. The Russian, Russian uh, soldiers found this air tax and uh, uh, airports, for example, and they steal them, and the uh, Ukrainian could follow the troops moving with these airports, air tracks uh, uh, in the battlefield. On the right side, you can see also one uh, guy who shows the uh, moving of the Russian soldiers fr uh, out from the city with his uh, smartphone. So basically, a smartphone can be also uh, an IoT devices. And they are shared on the Telegram, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. So we, uh, the troops can be followed now on the Twitter uh, everywhere. So we can say that the, this open source intelligence information can be the new uh, reconnaissance information because we can find the internet and we, uh, if uh, we can validate them, we can follow the troops. The, the more military part is the Im, uh, inter, uh, imaginary intelligence, like uh, using surveillance satellites with cameras, surveillance UAVs, airborne warning and uh, control system like AVEX, and we can follow the troops and we can uh, find uh, almost everything with these devices now in the military environment. So what is the difference between the battlefield military uh, battlefield things and the military things? That the military things is in higher level, so it's not ju just in the tactical level. It, it can be on the uh, strategic level as well. So they can support the, not just the command and control, they can support, for example, the C6 ISR, the command control communications, computer, cyber defense, combat systems, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. So they, they are a, a much bigger part of the uh, uh, mm, sorry, Internet of Things military environment. So if we can say that the Internet of Military Things is uh, the, the IOBTs and the higher level uh, devices like satellites and UAVs. So the conclu my conclusion is that, that uh, in properly configured IoT devices can present a serious attack potential even in the hands of uh, volunteer cyber warriors, which happens now in the Ukrainian uh, conflict. Smart devices and or surveillance systems can provide useful information for battlefield uh, reconnaissance and the uh, Internet of Military Things devices and systems can provide useful information for command and control and decision making at, at all level of operations. So uh, if you use the IoT devices in military environment, it, it will have the decision making process during the uh, situations. And thank you for your uh, attention. Well, thank you, Andrews, for your wonderful presentation. Now let us go ahead with the uh, next presenter. Uh... Hello, everyone. Um, the title of my presentation is Low Thermal Conductivity and Magneto and Magneto Surprise the Thermal Transport in a Highly Oriented FESB2 Single Crystal. Next, I will show this work in the following aspects. First of all, I will introduce the, the uh, research background. First, uh, from these two pictures, we know that the large scale exploitation and the use of fossil fuels has been causing the environmental damage. Therefore, 
uh, searching for pollution free and uh, renewable energy utilization technology is becoming urgent. In recent years, the thermoelectric conversion technology, which can realize the interconversion between waste and uh, and uh, electric electric thirty directly has a uh, has a uh, attracted the widespread attention due to the print uh, permission applications for power generators and uh, a gen green genic cooling device. This can be achieved by the Sebac effect and the uh, Perkey effect. The thermal conductivities, uh, sorry. The thermal conductive, conduct, the thermal electric efficiency mainly depends on the thermal electric feature and the merit ZT. From this formula, we can find that the high performance thermoelectric materials should promise process a high power factor and low thermal conductivity at a specific temperature. In this work, we have synthesized a FESB2 single crystal with a low thermal conductivity by the cell flux and cell flux uh, method. Centrifugation is applied to separate the single crystal from the mountain flux. The following picture shows the characterizations of the single crystal. Next is the result and the discussions. Figure 1a shows the XRD pattern with one zero peak. Figure 1b shows the morphology imaging of the single crystal. Figure 1c to E shows the rocking curves of 200, 040, and 003 peaks. The narrow FWHM of these rocking curves illustrates that the single crystal possesses quite high crystallinity. The figure 1F exhibits the abstract image with the detected axis. The figure 2A shows the SEM imaging of the single crystal. The inside show the inside is the selected areas for EDS measurement. The corresponding element mapping imaging are shown in figure 2B, which indicates that F, E, and S, B elements distribute homogeneously in this sample. Feature 2C presents the EDS spectrum. The, the atomic ratio is slightly of the nominal stoichiometric ratio of FESB2, which can be ascribed to that. The intrinsic point, point defect has been formed under the SB rich condition. This is the main reason for the low con thermal conductivity. Considering the anisotropy of the FESB2 single crystal, the 101 plane was used to thermoelectric properties measurement. Feature 3A to B exhibit the temperature dependence of the Seebeck if coefficient and the electrical conductivity. After 
applying the magnetic field. These two parament, these two parament depressed slightly, which result in a depressed power factor. Fortunately, the sample pre prepared by the self flux method has extremely low thermal conductivity. It can be further surprised by the magnetic fields. Further analyze found that the reduced thermal conductivity is mainly caused by the decrease of the phonon mean free pass. Finally, we make a summary of this work. The first high quality FESP2 single crystal was synthesized by the self flux method. The second, the Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tenzong. Yeah. Um, the next presenter, uh, anybody else uh, left? Uh, thanks, Obiao. Is it done? Thanks, Obiao. Yes. Yeah, uh, your, your presentation is done, right? I'm already. Yes, yes. Okay. Siali? Siali. I know who is Siali. Can you unmute yourself, Siali? Okay. Uh, Cloudy, um, can you share your presentation now? Yes, I am. Please. It's okay? Yes, yes, we are able to see the presentation. Please start. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Claudia Benevides. I am from Brazil and I am a doctor specialized in neutrology. Obesity is a global disease, as we can see on the map. In Brazil, the last digital survey published in 2021, a survey carried out by the Brazilian Ministry of Health for Surveillance, of risk and protective factors from chronic diseases showed about a nine increase in the incidence of obesity in the national population from 2006 to 2021. What the consequences of obesity? Increase the risk of developing the no communicable diseases such as diabetes, cancer, heart and cerebrovascular diseases and social stigma, negative influence on immunity associated with increased mortality and serious complications in COVID-19 infection. What to do? Uh, the question is that the dropout rates and the failure of classical restrictive diets are high. New pets should be found to combat obesity, especially in this post-pandemic period where there was a growth in weight gain around the world. This study aims to analyze the results of an online weight loss education program 
and bring new insights and suggestions for alternative approaches to obesity control. Methodology. This study analyzed 50 women with an average age of 50, 4.9 uh, for years old who applied the program for six months uh, between 2020 2021, coinciding with COVID, uh, coincide with the COVID-19 pandemic period. Participants were divided into four groups according to the characteristics in relation to previous diet and attempts and significant presence of emotional eating. Roots. Root one, for people who have not tried any diets in, in at least three months. Root two was the people who were on plateau and were unable to lose weight even doing diet. Uh, root three was for people with very present emotional eating associated with anxiety. Root four is, uh, was for people who wanted to lose a little weight or just maintenance. Uh, each hot, each route follows a different food strategy route as per the schema. This program was called Health Without Neurosis because the restriction time was short on all routes and always if the orientation not to completely cut out the favorite foods. It's a playful name with the intention of help to increase adherence to the program. Results. The route with the most individ individuals was route three with 78%. Weight loss was 8.33 kilos on average. 8% had Brazilian criteria for metabolic syndrome, the most frequent being central obesity, with 84% of the total, and dyslipidemia with 78%. All improved at least one criteria. Age 6 practice physical activity being 80% working. The most frequent complaints related to obesity before the program were anxiety with 78%, low self-esteem with 72%, poor sleep and very high stress with 60%, followed by body pain with 44% and low libido with 40% of presence between the women studied. We had a reduction in BMI in all obesity ranges and an increase in the overweight range, that is, People who were classified as obese migrated to overweight, which is positive. 90% of women lost more than 5% of their initial weight, which is considered a successful weight loss ranger. Conclusion. This study showed that it's possible to obtain a weight loss result through online guidelines, aiming on feed strategies according to the individual's histories in, rela in relation to previous diets, looking for added health food and short periods of food restriction. 
This can help to obtain sustainable and more physiological results in the long term. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. This is a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir.